Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today's video is gonna be about going out alone to nightclubs and bars and why you'd want to do this. I think even if you're scared, even if you're anxious, even if you're nervous at the idea of going out alone to these sort of places, the ability to do it, the ability to get over your fears and anxieties and be able to have a good time going out alone is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourselves in terms of social freedom. And there are other reasons as well you would want this too. I think for a lot of younger guys, they see the ability to go out alone without needing like their friends around as a way to increase their volume in terms of approaching girls, going out to, maybe they don't have friends who go out and they still wanna go and experience what it's like to try and get laid in the night scene, in the club scene. And yeah, that's a valid reason to wanna to be able to go out on your own. Maybe you're not thinking with your penis though. Maybe you're more like social. Maybe you just wanna go and make friends. Maybe you want to have friends who are in the night scene, into bars and clubs, and you don't have any. So you think, I, if I go out alone and meet people at bars and clubs, I'll be able to make those friends. And this is a valid reason too. The other one I have is going to events when your mates don't want to. Like there's tons of acts and like DJs and stuff that I want to go and see. And if I want to go and see these guys, I really have to be able to go to events on my own. It's like one of those things where I, I don't know, that I'm just not always going to be able to grab someone who's into that kind of stuff at every possible avenue. Also, I go traveling a lot and I'm often in a city and I realize, oh, someone's playing here and I want to immediately go off and see it regardless of whether I'm alone or whether I have someone to go with or not very unlikely if I'm just visiting a place on my own. I had a former client actually recently talk about how on Facebook that he went to a rave alone for the first time. And he just broke up with his longtime girlfriend. And so I think the experience that he had was very cathartic. Like it was, it's like a new chapter in his life post relationship. A like, as I said, it's a great sense of freedom that you get with the ability to go out and have a fun time without needing other people. I rank this somewhere around being able to cold approach women is being able to go out and have a good time on your own. Because once you don't have the need for other people in order to do this, like you can every single night is potentially, <coughs> sorry, every single night is potentially a, the best night of your life. You're not held back by the need for other people to go with you. It's amazing. And you're not held back from this idea that you can't go out approaching as well. Like if you're a day gamer, it's much more like normal to be out, you know, walking the streets alone. But at nighttime, there's like something holding guys back, you know? And like, if that were holding me back, like I talked about traveling, yeah. Most of my stories of going out alone in the first few years came from traveling. Like I'd rock up in a new city. What's the best example of this? Mexico, Guadalajara. I rocked up in Guadalajara. I don't speak the language. I don't really, I don't know anyone in Guadalajara, but there's a techno club called Casa Cobra. And I, the people I do meet, like I met a few girls off Bumble and Tinder on dating apps. And those are the main like ins I had to exploring like the scene, so to speak. But none of them were available on the Friday that I wanted to go to Casa Cobra. So I was like, screw this. I'm just going to go on my own. And even not being able to speak the language, although, you know, Mexicans, they do actually have like, you know, decent English. In the queue, in the club, I was able to make friends. I actually met fellow travelers. Like I met people who were in there who were also travelers. I met people who were like just locals that really like techno and really into that scene. And when I went to this, when I had this situation of going out on my own to this club, I was like, I would never have come here if I didn't have the, the ability or the freedom to just go out and see these things on my own. I, I, it's, it's curious to me that we probably are more comfortable like walking around exploring stuff on our own in the daytime, but it's somehow at nighttime where it's way more of a social thing, guys find it a lot harder to go out to clubs and bars. I, I definitely see this. Like you have no issue telling a guy to go approach and do like cold approach in the daytime in a shopping center somewhere, but telling them to go out to bars on their own is like another level of anxiety. And I, I definitely broke this down just by traveling. Like when I came to Vancouver as well, I had a similar situation where I think I'd been in a few too many weekends in a row just doing like work and I was getting like super like, you know, cabin fever almost. Like I hadn't been social. I'm massively extroverted. I wanna go and be social. And I saw on Instagram, there was like this event going on. I was like, it was like RSVP free before like 11.30. And I was like, screw this. I messaged a couple of people to see if they want to go. But 
after I got like no messages back or I did, people saying they were busy, I was like, no, I'm just gonna go out on my own and have a great time. And yeah, I met some friends in the queue and kind of just hung out with them for the rest of the night, met a few more people, met people in the scene as well, which is really helpful if you go out and make connections with people who are into the stuff you are, which is me, is like techno and raves. And like, I've got to, when I get to a new city, like I've got to try and get into that scene if I want to like, you know, have like know the connections I need to know to get into certain like parties and stuff that I want to get into. So that was really helpful for me. It was like networking, but on like a night scene basis. You need to have that. I think to really be a big part of any night scene, you need to have the ability to like go off to venues on your own and like meet people and like network immediately on a night out. And I guess I can have some, I can give some actionable advice and some ideas for like how you would do this if you went, you know, to a venue, like what would you, what would I do tactically if I went to an event or a bar, like where would I, okay, well, let's, let's ignore bars. Let's do clubs. Like my, my client who went to a rave, like I gave him some advice before he went and I said, yeah, go, when you go there, you're going to try and talk to people and you're going to go to these specific parts. So the first thing you need to do with going out alone is just actually do it. Like bite the bullet, say, I'm going to go to this event, show up, get in the queue and just get inside the doors. I know that sounds like obvious, but getting over your anxiety and just getting into the venue is pretty much like 80% of the battle here. Having a good time inside the venue is a lot easier than actually getting yourself out the door to the venue and going inside on your own without friends. I know I've dealt with this anxiety. This is the whole thing. And this is why starting with bars might be a good idea actually. If you start by like hopping bars, maybe a couple of nights a week, you go and just hop bars, get maybe get a drink, maybe get some water and just keep you know entering these venues on your own, sitting down, hanging out trying to chat to people, that would be a good warm up. But going to a club, going to a rave, going to a party on your own, just get there and get through the doors and get into the venue. Now your goal after this is to start talking to people, start breaking that stranger barrier, start talking to, and if you're in like a cold approach phase, you can just go like start cold approaching girls or groups of girls and use these, like combine these two things together. That's, that's perfectly valid. I would, if you're trying to ease your way into it, just start like small talking anyone. And there are some good places to go and start doing this. So the bar, typically a good place, because if you go to the bar, you order a drink and you just like, you look to, look to your right, look to your left and talk to the people either side of you. I think a lot of guys do this when it comes to like cold approaching in bars, that they start by trying to cold approach at the bar because you know, everyone's stationary and you can go up beside a girl who's stationary and talk to her. Uh, the other place is the smoking area, which is my number one. I don't smoke anymore, but this is the place where everyone usually goes out to talk because it's less, it's like less loud. And that's like a really good place to like, you go outside and you just start, you know, you just sit down and start talking to people who are smoking. Because again, people are stationary and it's relatively quiet so you can be overheard. I think you're getting the idea that the dance floor is typically the, the worst place. It's not impossible. Like, especially if you're like good at dancing or you're good at like, you know, speaking physically and making yourself heard. But if you're going to talk to someone on the dance floor, you are going to end up basically shouting at them over the music. This is why I recommend, you know, the places where people are stationary and where it's a little bit quieter. This is why bars and pubs are typically better to start off with because some, especially in England, there are like pubs where they don't even play music because the idea is that everyone goes there, gets a drink and starts talking to each other. Um, the other one I think I mentioned in my stories is the queue. Like I love chatting to people in queues. Like you won't, you can't stop me talking in queues, like getting to know people, trying to like, you know, ask people why they're out, where they're from. Like it's a really good place. Obviously with the queue, you can't really choose who you talk to. You're kind of stuck with the people who are like next to you, behind you, whatever. But that is in my experience, always been a really good place to like have friends before you get into the venue or at least know people before you get into the venue. Like I'll basically know the people in front of me and the people behind me before I get in, which means if I see them again, it's always like, hey, and I don't feel as alone because you know, I've clocked people that I recognize. And that would be my advice. So the queue before you get in, the bars, chat to people who are getting drinks at the same time as you and the smoking area. And I said, if you're approaching, just approach like normal, like you would uh, in bars and clubs, like when you're with your wings, but just obviously you're on your own. And that's how you can break social barrier as well, which is cold approaching. But yeah, you want your job, your goal is to small talk to people, talk about the music, talk about other club nights you've been to, just talk about anything. <laughs> like the conversation doesn't have to be super like deep, you know, like where are you from, what are you doing here, what are you studying, you working, blah, blah, blah. It's all small talk. But yeah, once you get inside, you start talking to people. Uh, you should be able to like hang out with people a little bit as well. Like people you've met, people you've chatted to, 
like especially at raves they won't care if you like go and dance next to them and like you'll be part of it or whatever you get drinks with them you can buy people drinks i sometimes buy people drinks as well like when i was younger i feel like i needed to make friends i'd buy people drinks it's not the worst thing in the world to do it was definitely easier when i was smoking as well because i used to hand out cigarettes to people like you know wins you a friend immediately if you hand someone a cigarette but yeah talk to people get in the groups a little bit dance with people and just kind of like have a good time and then leave when you want to leave. Like if you've been there for like a couple of hours, you've made small talk, maybe you've called approach some girls, maybe you've made out with a girl, maybe you invited a girl back. My client actually invited a girl back um, after he talked. He said he basically talked to every girl in the venue almost. So yeah, pretty well fucking done, man. Um, yeah, you can, it's a combination of things. You can try social, you can try cold approaching. As long as you talk to people, as long as you stay in the venue for a decent amount of time, you will get a decent level, you will get a decent way into breaking some of your approach anxiety. Not approach anxiety, you're going out alone anxiety. Sorry, mixing things up. It's the end of the video almost. So that's all my advice. I hope you give this a go. Like you consider doing this at least once. Some guys go to this stuff and then realize the club scene isn't for them or the bars aren't for them, you know? And that's fine. You can just day game. You can just use online dating. But I think it's a really good start to night game and night scene stuff to initially break the barrier of the fear of going out alone. That's what I would start with. All right, guys, you have a great time out there. Peace.